Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our traceability in manufacturing presentation, part one. This is part one of a four-part series, so hopefully everyone can hear me well. I'm Kevin Sargison with Ballast Canada. I have Jason Diaz with me. We'll be sharing duties today on this presentation. So we're going to begin right now. Jason. Thanks, Kevin. Um, as, as Kevin said, we're going to talk about traceability today, and this is part one of a four-part series. Uh, today's focus will be on traceability in manufacturing. Um, next month, we'll be talking about traceability solutions using HF and LF technologies. That's low-frequency and high-frequency technology. Um, session three is, is going to be dealing with UHF technology and barcoding technology. And then towards the end, um, in December, we'll wrap everything up with a, uh, a session called Prospecting Customers. So let's get started with traceability. Uh, and I want to define traceability first. What, what is traceability? Traceability, it says up here, is, um, is a way to record the history, location, or use of an item by means of recorded identification. The most important word here is visibility. What is visibility? And that's, that's really what traceability is all about. How would you know that a process is being done correctly? Um, better yet, how would you know what mistakes are being made in a process and how and where to improve those uh, processes? Visibility into that process is really the only way you can actually do that. You can capture and enhance things like quality achieve just-in-time, lean manufacturing, and comply with regulatory standards. Today, today's focus is to show you where these opportunities are. We'll start with talking about our, or Balif's USP, our unique selling proposition. Our unique selling proposition for traceability is the right data at the right time and at the right place. And why do we, why do we say that this is our USP? There's a few reasons, three reasons really. The first reason is that we cover all industrial identification needs. And what I mean, I mean by that is asset tracking, electronic or ECANBAN, production control or work in process, and logistics. These are the four areas we're going to focus on today. So we'll, we'll get a, some opportunity to talk about these four areas of these four plant functions, as well as the types of opportunities in each one of these functions. The second reason is we truly are an RFID leader. And why do I say that? We, if you take a look at our catalog today, which has expanded quite a bit, we, we show over 100 tag types. We show specialized tag types in UHF technology, HF technology, and LF technology. We have over 50 read-write head options or antenna options, and 15 ways to connect these using either a bus or serial or parallel connection. And finally, the, the last reason we have a USP that says the right data at the right time at the right place is because we truly have been doing this for a long time. Our C system has been in use for over 20 years, and customers still spec it today, and they still use it today. And that's got to say a lot about our technology. This is a bird's eye view of a, of a plant and the various processes in a plant that could benefit from a traceability program. Anywhere from receiving raw material into the plant processing it into finished material, moving that material around in a plant, and finally shipping that material or that finished product out of the building. Several areas where we can use technology in traceability, such as RFID, such as barcoding. And we'll spend some time uh, in four areas in particular, starting with asset tracking. What exactly is asset tracking? Think about what would happen if a tool essential to a process is lost, or a die was placed in the wrong location, or used in the wrong process. Think about the downtime that would uh, that a plant would suffer, and and the costs that a plant would suffer because of poor asset utilization. The goal of asset tracking is to reduce this non-productive time and asset losses while increasing overall productivity and utilization by accurately tracking assets. The ways we can do that today is using barcode technology and using RFID technology. We can track the asset's location, the condition, the conformity status, and the availability of an asset. 
there are a few areas where we call uh, our ROIs, where we can show ROIs um, using asset tracking. One is asset utilization. Um, very important is ensuring correct, the correct asset is used in a process. Imagine again if the wrong tool is used for uh, a product. The wrong CNC machine um, tool is used and cuts into a, a very expensive piece of metal. That could be a lot of cost for a customer. RFID or traceability is a way to ensure that the right tool or the right asset is being used. We can increase overall, overall asset productivity, reduce losses in these assets, uh, and non-productive time getting reduced. Next, we're going to show a few areas of application. Kevin, Kevin's going to talk about these. Thanks, Jason. Some of the commonly tracked assets, as Jason mentioned, could be machine tool. So we could have a, a facility, we could have a CNC machine, we could be tracking the use of the tools that are put inside the CNC machine. And some things we might want to look at are the offset measurements. So ideally what we'll have is the customer will have a presetter. The presetter will have uh, a RFID system based on it. And when the tool room engineer is setting up the tool, the values from the presetter are saved into the data carrier that's located in the inside the tool holder. And when we bring that tool holder into the magazine and load it into the magazine of the CNC, these values are read by the machine by the machine control system, which basically makes sure that the right tool is loaded and the, the right tool is loaded in the right area of the magazine so we're not making a bad part. Molds and dies are another area that we commonly want to track our assets and find out to, to again to ensure that we have the right die or the right mold loaded into the machine and that we're making a good part. So these are all common error proofing applications. Totes and containers are another area that need to be tracked in the manufacturing process. So a company may want to know where the tote is located. Um, is it where it's supposed to be? Is it sitting beside the machine or is it out in the stores or the warehouse area? It also helps us to be able to match up parts to ensure that the right part is being loaded. Modular subassemblies. So we may have many parts that make up the actual finished part. So we may want to track the smaller parts to ensure that all the smaller parts have been assembled correctly so that we know that the finished product is assembled according to specification. So what RFID allows us to do is to tag these individual parts so that we know we've assembled the finished product correctly. Here's an application for a storage tank. Now, we can use RFID on almost anything, but we may want to make sure that we have sufficient backup materials. So in this case, we have a propane tank, which may be used in some type of machine function or operation. We want to ID that. We want to know, again, that the right tank is loaded into the right area, and we may also want to know what number we're on so we have backup in reserve. Hand tools are another common thing that is becoming tagged right now with RFID. As Jason mentioned earlier, you may have an application where a hand tool or a tool is critical to the production of a part or a product, and if this tool is lost, a job function possibly could not be done. So if you lose that tool, you may run into downtime issues. So you want to know where that tool is at all times. Automated guided vehicles are another area where we've commonly used RFID technology by embedding RFID data carriers into the floor and having a reader on the AGV. We're able to track the movement of the reader. We're also able to tell what the last station that the AGV has been in. So we know that it's completed its proper movement around the manufacturing facility. We know where it is at all times. The trick to everything is getting the tag mounted on the asset. So commonly, the tag and getting it mounted is, is one, of the, one of the areas that we've had issues with in the past, and then that these are where any customer may or may not have an issue with mounting the tag properly. So we have a number of custom mounting solutions that we can provide. So basically, we don't want to turn any application away. We, we like to look at everything and see if we can accommodate you. The next area we, we want to talk about is electronic Kanban or, or e-Kanban. And to understand what Kanban is, um, I'm, I'm going to go through a, a manual Kanban process and, and 
try to um, explain to you what Kanban is. Kanban really is a scheduling system. It's a system that is used to get the right raw material to the right location when it's needed. Uh, one of the major benefits is to establish an upper limit to the work in process inventory. And what that means is really that inventory is at the right amount. There's the right amount of inventory. We're not overstocked. And again, we're not understocked either. We just have the right amount of inventory. It's, it's JIT, just in time. In a manual system, a Kanban card is generally used. And, and on the screen here, you can see a, a board. This is a Kanban board with various cards, color-coded cards on them. A Kanban card is really just a signal. It's a signaling system to tell somebody that product has been depleted and I need more raw material. Typically, this is at an operator station. As an operator runs out or, or runs out of material, raw material, they signal, usually a forklift driver, for more raw material. This, again, is a manual way of using a Kanban system. Um, let's just try to visualize exactly what the system does. Let's say, for example, an operator bin has been depleted. The operator signals this with a Kanban card, which has a, a card with a, with a certain color combination. That ca card is matched with a container in the warehouse. A container with the same Kanban card and the color coding is dispatched with a forklift driver. Now, sometimes these drivers, they, they work on a timing schedule, which means that they would be driving around knowing where certain stations and what time certain stations would need raw material. So it purely is based on timing. They pick up a Kanban card from the operator station, bring it back to the warehouse, get the right material, and bring that raw material back to the manufacturing line. Once they have the, the right material in the manufacturing line at the operator station, they take the empty container back to the warehouse. This is what they call a post system. Um, it is completely manual, as you can see. And in a system like this, there could be some issues, mainly human error. And these issues are t issues in timing. If this is a timing-based system, uh, timing is not always right. Forecasting is not always right. It's not really just in time. There could be issues with lost cards, visuals, overstock. There are sometimes operators and forklift drivers will overstock the operator station so they don't have to go there frequently enough. The issue with that is as you overstock the operator station, the system will automatically order more raw material even if you don't need it. So there is a waste of resources there. Let's move over to what an e-Kanban system would look like. Again, visualizing e-Kanban. Again, with an operator bin depleted, in an e-Kanban system, you would have an RFID system uh, located on the racks. That RFID system would immediately, immediately send a signal to the ERP system, the main ERP system of the plant, which will signal the warehouse. Now, because we're using RFID, the ERP system will know the exact amount of inventory and location of that raw material in the warehouse. This will signal our dispatch unit to pick up the raw material. And as it does that, and you can see it every, every step of this process, it's writing or relaying this information back to the ERP system. The forklift driver would take this container, bring it to the location where it's needed. As it brings it to that location, again, an RFID system would write that information back to the ERP system, letting it know that the container has been refilled. As the operator takes the empty container back and returns it to the warehouse, again, that information is fed back to the ERP system closing the loop. This stage is completely electronic. Everything in these stages are electronic. So we minimize the amount of error that could happen in a, in a process like this with eCanban. With the evolving eCanban system, what we're able to do is introduce the higher velocity and visibility to the Kanban information and remove the manual interaction with the operator and the forklift driver or the way of supplying the 
product to the to the machine. So it, it, it automates the reporting system and it also ensures that errors are reduced. So if you look on the right, that's what we call the intelligent rack concept where we're using RFID. So what we have in here is we have a, a full container going in, being read by the RFID system, communicating with the ERP system, signaling that we have a full bin and then when that bin is empty, the empty bin is placed in there and the same thing happens. The empty bin is read and the system knows that the bin is empty and it signals for another bin. Here we look at an IO Link solution. If you look at the IO Link Masters, this is a way of utilizing a single PLC control to easily expand and cover multi-racks of an eCanban system. So we'll have what we have here is we have an IO Link Master on each rack joined by a simple I, uh, standard sensor cable. Uh, the PLC will have a network cable coming out of this, so this could be on Ethernet IP, it could be on Profibus or Profinet or any of our network technologies, and then it simply goes to, directly to the rack. The rack can have a smart light on it, the rack can control the RFID, and the rack can also have sensors on it to control the position of the tote within the rack. Here's how each cell looks in the eCanban system. So. The examples will show you on the, le on the left of your screen, you're seeing the typical rack. Uh, on the right, it's a UHF type of system where the UHF antenna is reading a RFID tag that would be placed in the box, picking it up, and then the computer on the bottom is just giving you an idea of the ERP system and the communication back and forth. Okay, production control or work in process. This is probably the area where most of us are comfortable using or recommending RFID. Uh, production control, uh, here are the, some of the ROIs in relationship, in relationship to production control. Um, enabling flexible manufacturing, that's, that's a big word there, flexible manufacturing. Tracking the rework process. Managing recalls. Managing or maintaining regulatory compliance and managing work in process. There really are three areas uh, that can be tracked in a production system. The first one is called the build area and uh, this, is, this is like a recipe. It's telling you, it's telling the system what needs to be built. Process data is telling the system how well it was built or error proofing. And lineage data which tells the system where all the components to build a part came from. Let's take a look at each one of these. Uh, build data, so for example, in this case, you're, you're building a car seat. Uh, inside the RFID system is a matrix that tells the production system exactly what it needs to build. Um, so this one has, for example, airbags. Uh, it tells you what color they're building. Does it have uh, adjustment in power or is it manual? It gives it a style code, a trim code, the year. Um, basically, everything that goes into building this particular car seat, this model of car seat, um, is inside of this recipe. And all the parameters of sensors, drives, can all be uh, manipulated to make this particular part. Process data, um, this is really recording data out of each part of the process. Think about building a part from start to finish all the way to the very end and not knowing until the very end, until the part is completed, that there was an error in manufacturing. If that was a vehicle, if that was, in this case, uh, an appliance, uh, that would be loss of the entire part and that's a lot of money. In some cases, that part may not be able to re be reworked. Uh, ensuring that you have a way to look in or have visibility into the process at every stage will allow the system to pick up errors inside of that process, stopping it from being worked all the way through, uh, picking up errors in the, in the middle and reworking them as um, in, in the line, in line reworks. Lineage data, um, this has to do again with uh, what exactly goes into a, a part or a product? What components go into a part or product? The simplest way to look at it is if you take a look at a, at a product, there are multiple sub-assemblies to that product. Um, you could capture all of the serial numbers of those sub-assemblies 
and load that information into an RFID tag. And this can be done in process again. As the part is being built from start to finish, you can have all the serial numbers of all the components put into an RFID tag. At the end of the day, you know exactly where a subcomponent came from. If there was a, a, a recall of a subcomponent, you would need to recall just the batch that used that subcomponent, not every single thing produced in, in a one-year time frame. There are two options in doing things like this in, in production control or work in process. Uh, one way is tagging a pallet and having it like a license plate. So basically you have it as a read-only part uh, or read-only system. You uh, you're basically have all of your data written, written back to a database. The RFID tag is really just a license plate identifying the pallet. Or you can tag the part itself and you can have all the data, all the process data, put directly into the RFID tag on the part. Interlogistics is essentially, as it says, the material flow between plants. It can also be material flow between areas of a plant, or it could be material flow between other plants. The key ROI elements for interlogistics is to, what we want to do is we want to maintain control of our parts and know where our parts are going. So we may have many different sub-suppliers, like in an automotive plant, we may have multiple sub-suppliers that bring in anything from, from metals to materials to uh, plastics. And we want to know that all of those parts have come into our facility. So what this allows us to do is reduce time, reduce errors when receiving components and also allows us to ensure that we're going to keep our production running because the components are all within our manufacturing facility. And it also allows us to maintain regulatory compliance with regulatory bodies. Material flow between plants can be accomplished by using RFID, usually a UHF type of system, and a gateway at the entrance or the exit of a building. So typically, you'll see the transport truck on the right-hand side of your screen with a number of different containers on it. Those containers would all have a UHF or an RFID tag on them, and when the material handling equipment that goes into that truck, the forklift goes into that truck and picks up those totes, you have a gateway inside that particular door and the parts are scanned as they come in, and, and on most occasions you'll have sensors mounted in there as well to see the directional flow of material. With a closed loop system, also called product logistics, we're tracking the flow between different facilities. So we may have, we may build a subcomponent, and we may ship that subcomponent to another company. What we can do there is have the assembled subcomponent in a pallet or a tote. We've identified the tote so we know all components are in place. It goes through the UHF gateway on the way out. As you see the tow motor driving it, you go through the gateway, you load it onto a truck. It goes to the other plant or other facility where it needs to go to, and when it's unloaded, it similarly goes through another gateway to say that the, pro the product has arrived. There you see the gateway by the uh, doors, by the shipping doors of the facility. So the gateway may have multiple antennas depending on how difficult or how easy it is to pick up the RFID tags. So what you're going to get in this, in a UHF system, is typically a long-range measurement, and you're able to read multiple tags at once, which is ideal for bringing in multiple totes. You don't want to have to stop and read each one individually or have it hand scanned. You want them to scan simultaneously as they come into the building. Identifying the targets. This is important. There's multiple industries that we can use RFID, and we're not limited solely to automotive or tier one. Aerospace, heavy equipment, medical, food and beverage, and packaging are, are certainly other markets of interest for RFID. The companies that may want to use these products are anybody that manufactures any type of durable good or any good, and OEMs or system integrators may want to use these to track the movement of parts. Traditionally, we tend to deal with personnel and the maintenance areas, be they maintenance workers or maintenance managers, engineering people, uh, and some production people and process people. With RFID, we also want to look at plant and logistics managers, specifically for UHF, and people that do continuous, continuous improvement of quality. They're most likely to use an RFID system. Our plant electrician is not likely one who's going to specify an RFID system.
We're also going to have to get involved with the IT department, specifically if we have an ERP system or another way of reporting the tracking of our, of our product. We actually have a few questions in today that we want to get to. Uh, some people have sent us questions via the chat. So first question we have is, is UHF the only technology used in e-Kanban? And to answer that question, it's, um, it's not necessarily true that UHF is the only technology that would be used in e-Kanban. Just like everything else we've talked about today, there are multiple parameters that go into picking the right RFID system. In fact, in, in, in eCanban, you could actually have a combination of high frequency, low frequency, barcoding, as well as UHF. You could have all the totes uh, that go onto the racks with high frequency systems since you don't need the range. You can go with a high frequency tag that has a range of six inches to about a foot. Um, and, the, and, the, and the bin that all the raw material goes into, which is being transferred in and out of a plant, that could have a UHF system since it's going to be read inside of uh, a dock door, which requires more range. And you can marry the two tags, the two, two technologies together. So it, it really depends. It doesn't, it doesn't just use one technology. You could use multiple. The next question we have is, uh, you mentioned four plant functions. How do I know which technology to select? That's a, that's a very good question. And again, um, we will be speaking more about solutions in the next few uh, sessions that come up uh, and, and what solutions to pick depending on, on certain parameters. And again, in this case, uh, there's a lot of different parameters to look at. Things like range, do you need a short range, a long range, uh, speed, uh, how much data you need to read or write, how many tags you, you want to read and write at once. Uh, you know, if you need multiple tags, that automatically means that you, you're looking at UHF. Um, and we also need to look at things like where the tags are mounted. So there are a lot of things that we can look at in order to pick the right system. And again, we'll talk more about that in the next few sessions. Can an RFID system be implemented outdoors? How does environment factor like rain, snow impact performance? There, um, there are ways you can mount RFID system outdoor, an RFID system outdoors. Uh, we haven't run into many applications where you need to have an RFID system outdoors, uh, but if there is a need, uh, it would be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but there are ways to do that. Of course, we, we need to take a look at the technology. If it's UHF, you need to make sure it's contained. Um, a UHF system does not deal very well with the outside or even indoor elements, water, uh, metals, uh, even movement of, of human beings. Uh, so it, it really depends on the application. But yes, it could be possible.